Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. In other words, he's bearing the burden of the welfare of the world. The government shall be upon him. What a responsibility. What a mandate. What a mission. His name is Jesus, the Savior of the world. His unique birth. Conceived of the Holy Ghost, Emmanuel, God with us. His humble place of birth in Bethlehem. What a rich spiritual heritage was the little town of Bethlehem that announced the coming of the Savior. And having all this, now God himself will sent his messengers to bring forth that good news. After the great condescension of God for his son to enter human history, to come upon earth, surely the earth must know about it. The people must know about it. There must be great a great announcement who to give this message to who will carry who will be faithful to carry that message of salvation the message of the Savior's birth the message that the Savior has come into the world who will give this message well the heritors will first begin from heaven. The sun will be sent and the angels will declare from heaven. And God appointed shepherds to be the first human heritors to carry the good news. This is our fourth message. Heritors, angels and shepherds. And they were in the same country. Verse 8 of Luke chapter 2 says, Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, the messenger of the Lord. That's the meaning of the word angelos angel, the messenger of the Lord. They are sent forth to declare a message, spiritual beings. You see, it was the angels who were sent forth that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember the great destruction that came upon that two wicked city? What great judgment! But it was also the angels who were sent forth to declare the good news of the Saviour's birth. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. What privilege it is for us to see, and God has gathered us, as a, a group, a simple group of his people to carry forth the shepherd's announcement, the angel's declaration. He counts you worthy. He counts you faithful. And he is announcing this great news that we may put everything aside 
and carry this message to the ends of the earth because there's no other messenger for God except you. How many can one man reach? Well, <laughs> not so much. I can only reach you. But if each one of you would reach the fall that is given you, the people who God will send to you, then this will be multiplied 40 times. What a great announcement it will be. And we realize how limited we are. But God does not look at us after our ability, but God look at us if we would be faithful to carry that message. If you would be faithful to take that message, to realize the great salvation that God has wrought first in your heart, what God has done with you, your heart, He must first energize you. That's the beginning of grace. The beginning of the flowing fountain of life. Effervescing. Right? Jesus told the woman at the well in Samaria, if you have this, drink of this water that I will give to you, you will never thirst again. Wow! Never thirst again. What kind of a water is that? Living water, Jesus says. Living water. How refreshing it will be when it comes from the refreshing of the Spirit of God upon us. What a refreshing. We may be exhausted to the end, <laughs> but in the Spirit, we are filled full with spiritual strength to persevere to the end. So here, the angels announce to the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. The Saviour, the announcement of the Saviour. What a great announcement. The angel from heaven had to first declare this. To share that joy, the sharing of the joy. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock in the night. We see this interplay of heavenly glory and lowly approachability of the Saviour. You see the interplay there? The heavens declare the glory of God and yet He comes so near to us, so nigh unto us. So, so much, so that he comes personally to you as a friend. This is what you can do as a friend. You go and you share with someone the good news. What joy it is to know the Saviour. We can call out to Him for all our needs. He will certainly help us because He is the Saviour of the world. Ask 
and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give a stone? If he asks a fish, will he give a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more the Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him. What is it that God has given us? God has given us his all. He has given us his only begotten son. He has given us his only begotten son. God has given himself to us. The greatest gift that he can ever give he has give it, given it to us. Christmas, therefore, is the highest point of human history because it marks the fulfillment of God's plan to save mankind from the curse of sin that is not only physical death but also eternal judgment in the lake of fire. And God wants us to understand the spiritual reality in a physical world. The spiritual reality in a physical world. Do you understand? Can you understand? Well, we can understand when we see somebody in the hospital struggling in pain or somebody on the deathbed gasping for breath. We can see it at Christmas. We remember the birth of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And He alone can save us from our sins. So that when we grasp for that last breath, absent in the body will be present with the Lord. And this is the promise that God has for us. That's the joy that God wants us to experience in Christ at Christmas. This is the good news that the angels announced to the humble shepherds tending their sheep in the field in Bethlehem that night. That was the joy that was announced to the world. God sent his angels to announce. And who did he, whom did he choose? He did not go to Jerusalem to make the announcement not to the Pharisees, not to the scribes, not to Herod. None of those would be bothered. None of those have any time for the Saviour or for any matter, anyone else. Fear not, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people unto you is born this day, this day, in the city of David that's in Bethlehem, a Saviour which is Christ the Lord. And the Lord is bidding us to rejoice, to rehearse this great joy of our Saviour's birth that it may warm our hearts and it may give us strength to go out to share this good news to a dying world. What is this joy that the angel was speaking about? Questions again. How is the birth of the Saviour able to bring great joy to all people? What is this joy? What is this joy? What are we talking about? This joy is not the fleshly happiness of the world, going to parties, receiving gifts, eating a good meal, buying a new car, striving a, for a promotion, getting a pay increase. This joy that the Bible speaks of is different. The joy of Christmas begins with the joy of salvation. With our sins confessed and forgiven, when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God that was born in a manger in Bethlehem, the city of David. To be reconciled to God, that's the greatest joy. To have your sins forgiven, to have eternal life, that is the joy. 
That is the joy. To have eternal life. This world that we live in goes for entertainment and thought that it was that it is joy to be entertained for two hours in a comedy, in a movies. Is that joy? Biblical joy is not the entertainment kind of happiness. We live in an era of the television, the big screen entertainment. People who do not want true joy go for entertainment. They go for a substitute, but it's not a lasting substitute. Even the church today has caught the entertainment bug. Worship services are transformed into mega entertainment shows. Well, that's not the meaning of the preaching of the gospel. The announcement that was given, the angels told the shepherds in the field, and this is a sign unto you, the angels said to the shepherd, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. This is how you can identify the Saviour. He will be a baby that is wrapped in swaddling clothes that's lying in a manger. So you cannot missed him. Don't go to the inn, but go to the stable. The angels told this, not to the inn or the hotel, but in the stable for the horses in the car park or in the garage. The manger is a feed trough. For the horses and in the stable there was not comforts of the inn no heater no warmth a harsh environment in a cold night and this is the sign the angels told the shepherd by which he will identify the savior of all people he will not be found in the palace of herod though he is the king of the universe the creator of heaven and earth the sustainer of all life, but he will have a lowly birth, a humble birth. And this is the Saviour. If you know him personally, you will enjoy the fullness of Christmas joy. So the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. For if we were, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. To be reconciled, to be saved by his life. We were enemies, but we were reconciled. You see, we have peace with God. How do you obtain this peace? Well, when this peace comes to us, when we have our sins forgiven, you would find that there is no more struggle in the heart. Whatever the external environment, you have peace, that peace that is a spiritual tranquility that God gives you, Someone, as we have mentioned earlier, was asked to depict what is this peace that God gives to us. So one painter says, the lake, the plain, the mountain, beautiful environment, that's peace. Another painter, he Threw right in the middle of the picture a waterfall. And then he draw at the side a tree. And there was a branch that came out, and the branch hit the waterfall. And you can see the sprays of it coming out. And there, at the end of it, a twig. And at the twig, a nest. 
and in the middle of a nest, a little bird. And there, he said, this is peace. In danger, there was tranquility. Indeed, we are living in danger zone. And yet, if you have God with you, God is there to care for you. The peril may be so great. You know, you, you can go out in the street one day, and whether you're driving and you're walking, or whether you can be running. Where is your safety? Where does it come from? Well, it's from the Lord, who preserveth your footsteps. He is the one who keeps you. And if you have him with you, then you have that peace that comes to you in spite of the danger of life. And so here, the Lord is saying to us that when we are justified by faith, nothing else, faith in the Lord, it is, a place, this is a place for the faithful. You'll be willing to carry the message. You would be willing to bring forth that joy to someone. This child was born with a death mission, the mission to live a perfect life without sin and to suffer and to die the death that sinful fallen men may be reconciled to the living God. This is the joy, this is the joy, the joy of reconciliation, the joy of salvation. The basis for joy is to be the recipient of God's grace and peace in Jesus Christ. So if you have received it, then there will be a transformation that is coming from within you, a peace that comes from within you that is immaterial of your external circumstances. The peace of God, the joy of God that overcomes the sin and the sorrow of this world, even the death. Can you understand what we are speaking about? This is what the Lord wants you to understand. The grace of God, the favour of God, the unmerited favour of God, where we deserve His judgment. God's grace is the only way to be reconciled to God. For by grace, Paul writes in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, are ye saved through faith, not of yourselves? It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Peace comes from experiencing God's grace. Have you experienced God's grace in your life? Well, I experienced God's grace last week when we prayed that God would grant us good weather for Grandma's funeral. And we pray for God's grace to enable us so that we may be able to come to camp. That's God's grace for us. That we may have safety, that we may be able to travel and have the strength enough to make that journey. So we have four days of visual services, four days with a captive audience, 80%, 90% haven't heard the gospel, but a captive audience from which the word could be declared to them. What a joy, what a privilege. The grace of God Peace describes the inner well-being of the heart that comes from being reconciled to God. 
through what he provided in Christ. This babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger is the Saviour that grants to you this peace. With it, joy. The inner well-being of the heart. You know, when the heart is well, when the heart is well, all else will be well. The physical may not be well, but when the inside is well, then all else will be well. You see that? The inside must first be well. And God has provided that for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. When we come to Christ, when we fix our eyes upon Him and focus upon Him, if you are lacking God's joy, I urge you to examine your foundation. Have, have you fully trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Saviour? Have you fully surrendered your life to Him? If you have, then this joy must come to you. It is, it is irresistible. Irresistible. This joy must come to you. Like an orphan finding his lost parent, the prodigal son comes back to the father. The father's house is riches and honour, protection and provision. This is the joy that comes with the knowledge. And this knowledge helps us to come to our senses and say, I will arise and go to the Father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be thy son. Make me one of thy servants. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, saw him and had compassion and fell, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The father said unto his servant, Bring forth the best robe. To put on him, put on a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for my son which was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and he began to marry. And you know in this story, this parable that the Lord gave, what was the uh, conclusion of this parable? There was joy in heaven. The angels sang for joy. This was the lost son. Right? Before that, God gave the lost coin. The lost coin was lost in circulation within the house. Around here, but lost. Then the lost sheep, the shepherd had to go out to find it stuck somewhere in the bramble bushes. And when the sheep was brought home, there was again great joy in heaven. Great joy. The angels announced the joy. This we rekindle at Christmas. The joy of being God's children through Jesus Christ. Also, the basis for joy is to be in the fellowship of a local church with God's people. Amongst the saints, those born again into the family of God, you find a like-minded a joy of kindredship, a joy of belonging. To become a part of God's family would cost you nothing, but it costs God dearly. How Great it is that you have many brothers and sisters in Christ. How happy Jesus, the very God himself, had to come in human flesh, born in a lowly manger. He had to put away the glory that was due unto him to have us regain the paradise lost to us when men first sinned and fell. So, you know, independence, uh, is a not a good word not a good word a sad word 
Without a dependence on God, we are incomplete. Our joy flows from that dependence as we come into the body of Christ, where Christ is the head. And so we see the cause for joy. What, why, why were the angels shouting, announcing to the shepherds God's gift of His Son, the babe wrapped in a swaddling clothes, lying in a manger in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this joy is appropriated when we receive the gift of love, His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the joy that comes by being reconciled with the living God through His Son, Jesus Christ. The joy of being found in the fellowship of a local church. That is why we say, neglect not the assembling of yourselves together. That is why we have been, right, some of our brethren have been so persistent. Please, push ahead. We would pray God would make a way for us, that we can meet. And indeed, God made a way for us by His grace. We could meet, and we are here. And so we see the cause of joy. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven and the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which of told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that he had seen, heard and seen as it was told unto them. God revealed the coming of his son to the shepherds in the field in Bethlehem. The illiterate men little verse in human learning. Angels, choral song, made known of the birth of the Saviour. Christ the Lord, and they hasted to Bethlehem to see the great sight. Indeed, with humble hearts, we bow in adoration before this child, gift of infinite love, sent from on high to purchase our salvation that we might dwell with him forever. The time was right. The place was right. And the circumstances were right. It was not with high and mighty, the high and mighty in Israel that the first coming, the incarnation of Christ was celebrated by a multitude of heavenly hosts in heaven and on earth. It was to a group of lowly shepherds living out in the fields, watching over their flock by night. The shepherds there was no occupation lower than being a shepherd in those days. There's no lower occupation. <laughs> you don't want this job. A thousand years earlier, David, the youngest of eight children, was assigned that humble and dangerous task by his father, Jesse. It involved sleepless hours during cold nights on a grassy hillside, sometimes threatened by wild animals. You know the danger of being a shepherd? The shepherd understands life because it's always dealing with the dangers of life. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the shepherds nearby responded. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. 
These men were humble, obedient servants of God. But that was not the end of their response to the angelic proclamation. And when they had seen it, they, had, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. When they saw it, they made known. You see, they didn't just receive the message and keep it in their hearts and, and you know, hide it under their pillow. What did they proclaim? The angel said unto them, Fear not, behold, I bring you great good tidings of great joy, great joy, which is to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Let this joy of being a child of God renew your strength. And may the Spirit of God energize you to be a witness of these good tidings of great joy to all people that God will bring to you. How thankful we are for what God had done for us. The cause for joy, the commission to spread the joy. You are commissioned. You are the privileged people with the message of salvation. And you are to go forth and announce, go forth and declare, go forth and bring that message. We are living in a dark world. Never so dark in so many decades. And we are at that pivotal point this December. And God is saying to you that you have a mission. What is that mission? That mission is to bring the gospel so that men and women, one by one, may be transformed, changed from the inside, light, dispelling the darkness of the heart, light, dispelling the darkness. When the Darkness is being dispelled. That light is so great. Our message in our camp forward says we have a triumphant message that we must be we must be wholeheartedly embracing and warmly shared so that God's blessing may overflow to others that He sends our way. The prophet Isaiah says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of, Lord, of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, the gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings of the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar, and thy daughters shall be nursed by thy sight. What a message! What joy! Let that joy fill your heart so that, you know, no evil can penetrate it. No evil darts can take away that joy. No one can remove that joy from you. Nothing that anybody would say, nothing that anybody can do, will take away that joy from you because it is the joy that God gives to you when you are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. And the announcement, the proclamation has been going on for 2,000 years. 2,000 years! 
what great movement of the Holy Spirit. And it must go forth from here. Go forth from here, from you. And the Lord will energize you. And you will go. And the Lord will use you. One will chase a thousand and two will put ten thousand to flight. We have more than two. So how many can we win? Surely God has his own out there that he has already identified. And you are that messenger. May you be the faithful messenger. May you carry forth that joy, not just at this season of Christmas, but over to the new year and spread that joy as the darkness envelopes around the world. Let that joy break forth. Let the light break forth. Let that message of grace shine forth. And let the transformed heart renew every society. Regenerate. Restore. Reinvigorate. May God help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank thee for sending the angels and the shepherds to announce the Saviour's birth. A humble birth. Bethlehem. Swaddling clothes. Manger. Stable. Oh God, how privileged we are to have this tidings of great joy and how Thou hast equipped us for the mission. May Thou send us forth and help us that we may bear fruit tenfold, thirtyfold, fiftyfold, a hundredfold to the honour and glory of Thy name. Help us, Lord. We are weak and we ask that Thou would fill us with Thy Spirit and send us forth. This I pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.